Today we're going to be talking about an issue that I've never really had with my quads, but something that a lot of people do seem to have. But it's definitely something that's it's a very common problem. Um, I have absolutely no idea why I don't get this issue. Maybe we're going to find out today when I go through the process of trying to fix it. But uh, a friend of mine, one of the local pilots, reached out to me. He built this quad, which is a direct copy, basically, of the quad that I fly, um, KISS V2 hardware. It's got the F40 Pro 2400 kV motors, uh, the F the Pro 2. Uh, I've just stuck some, some of my props on there, um, but he basically, he runs the Dell Cyclones, which are very similar in terms of um, flight characteristics to the 4.3 V1S. Um, and I tried to work through this issue where he was having this really obvious mid-throttle oscillation problem um, at it was sort of all over the place. Like the, you could really, it was really obvious in the video, um, HD video, and it's even worse in the, in the DVR, you can hear it. So there's clearly something wrong with the quad. I tried to sort of give him some ideas about what he could do to, to fix it. Um, just online, we couldn't get it. We couldn't get the problem to go away. So I actually got him to just send me the quad because I was like, look, it's really hard to troubleshoot a problem when you don't have the quad in your hand. There's so many variables about the way things are put together, the way they're wired up, if there's anything moving, if the flight control is moving. So this is going to be a learning experience for me just as much as you guys. Um, and I thought it'd be an interesting experience to go through the process of what I would do when I do have this issue. So um, hopefully this will shed some light onto exactly what causes or maybe some of the things that can cause this problem and I'll give you some ideas about what I would do to fix it and then hopefully we get a resolution and you know if you guys are having this problem yeah hopefully this will be helpful now this is something that is more common on KISS stuff but it's definitely not limited to KISS stuff I think that one of the reasons why it's more common on KISS is that generally speaking and I've said this in the past KISS hardware is not that forgiving if there's something wrong with the quad. Now, you know, if you have like a frame that's not very rigid or you've got bent props or bent motors or something like that, it seems to show up more with KISS hardware. KISS is better suited to quads that are put together better, basically a little bit tighter, nothing bent, no, you know, no vibrations or anything like that. So it is something that it's become a little bit notorious for. Uh, and like I said, you know, I've had numerous people comment over the years saying oh you know how i'm having i see you're flying kiss i'm having mid throttle oscillations can you help me and i'm like well no because i don't have them i don't know why i literally have no idea why i suspect it's something to do with the way that i build quads um because that's the only thing that's remained consistent and potentially different you know somebody like this quad is running the exact same hardware as mine and even you know same props it does the same thing i've tested it already um, I tested it yesterday and it does the same problem as, as it does with the Dell, with the Cyclones. So that means that the only difference between this and say, aside from the 3D printed mount, which makes absolutely no difference, the only difference between this quad and this quad is that I built this one and not this one. So if it's got something to do with that, I don't know, um, but we're going to go through the process. We're going to check all of the hardware. So you've got to swap out each component one at a time fly controller motors if, if it was a hardware issue my guess is that it's most likely either a fly control or a motor um, so a quick disclaimer for any of the methods that i use or advice that i give advice that i give throughout this video I, i'm not an expert and this is just literally you know an insight into how i would work through the process if i do anything wrong um, or if anybody has any suggestions about how you can do something better or more effectively, then please, by, by all means, leave them in the comments. I'm sure you will anyway. Um, but yeah, don't take it as gospel. It's just some ideas on how to do things. So my understanding with if there was an issue with the flight control, as in an actual hardware problem, the gyro was screwed or something like that, the only way you're going to be able to figure that out for sure is by getting another flight controller and swapping it out. You can just cut and paste the settings into the new one, mount it exactly the same way and then go and fly. And if it's fixed, then obviously there's something wrong with the flight controller. If the problem is still there, then it's something else on the quad. You know, it's just very simple process of elimination. So the first step in the process for me is gonna be to basically just look over the quad. So 
what you're looking for is anything that moves. Um, oscillations will be caused by, you know, if the quad's sitting on the bench and the motors are spinning or something, the quad's not moving anywhere. So there's no reason why there's, you know, obvious vibrations that are gonna make it back to the flight controller. But it could be something as simple, even as like this um, battery strap moving around. Now I'm sure that's tight once you've got a battery, you know, mounted on the quad. So that's probably not an issue, but anything like that. So if, if there's like the um, VTX in here, is a little bit like there's a bit of movement in it so if that's getting wind hitting it or something like that at a certain frequency or whatever then there's a possibility that that movement or that vibration is going to make its way back to the flight controller and that could cause oscillations um, could be the same with if your ESCs aren't mounted securely um, if a bolt in a motor is slightly loose if a motor shaft is bent if a prop is bent any of these sorts of things can cause an oscillation to go through the entire quad. The other thing to be aware of if you're having these oscillation problems is you need to check the difference between your HD video and your DVR video because for example this quad has an issue where I think maybe the, the, um, the board and the camera is loose but when you're flying it, it looks like there's an oscillation through your, your FPV feed. But when you look at, when you listen to it, like just listen to your ear, you know, the sound of the quad as you fly past yourself, there's no um, sense that there's an oscillation problem. And when you check the HD video, there's no oscillation whatsoever. And it feels perfect to fly in terms of responsiveness. There's no like weirdness in the control inputs. It's just that the camera moves a little bit. So to me, I haven't worked through the problem in this quad, but to me that tells me that there's that it's simply just the actual FPV camera that's a little bit loose. This quad has a complete has a, like full blown oscillation. Um, you can see it through the DVR video. You can see it through the HD video. You can hear it when you're just throttling it up, you know, line of sight. Um, so this is a completely different problem. This is the one we're going to try and solve today. But that is a distinction that you need to be aware of if you're. You know, you go out and start flying and the, the camera is moving. The first thing you want to do is check your HD video and just listen to it. Generally, if an oscillation is bad enough that like it's causing visibility problems, you will definitely be able to hear it if it's an actual, you know, an issue with the, um, with the motors and the control of the quad. So looking through the entire build of the quad to see if there's anything loose, checking, you know, just going through and checking like, all of the frame bolts, motor bolts, um, checking visually, just like doing this sort of thing to see if there's any obvious sort of weirdness with motor bearings to see if the shafts are bent. You know, if they're really bent, you'll be able to see it straight away by just doing this. If they're a little bit bent, you probably have to resort to other things, which we'll go into later. Once you've gone through that process, if it doesn't look like there's anything bent, or loose or anything like that and you're definitely still having the problems nothing's moving around you know obviously like things are a little bit loose in this build but nothing that in my mind would cause this problem so therefore i assume that it's going to be something else um, whether it's a faulty component or as i say like i have not had to really work through this problem on quads of mine in the past and if i have i would probably have just replaced components until it went away which is not really solving the well it's it's not finding out the exact cause of it so yeah we're just going to start going through the process of process of elimination check some obvious components like the motors and the flight controller if it's neither of those things then i'm going to start looking at things like soldering signal wires um yeah i don't know if it's not that then you could replace all of the esc so this is another reason why i had um, my friend sent me the quad because it makes it a lot easier for me to work through the problem because I can replace, if I need to, I can replace every single component individually one at a time, go out, test it, see you know whether that's made a difference. Um, but maybe throughout the process of this video, you know, we figure out some more obvious causes for these problems and that can obviously, you know, hopefully you guys can take that information and use it if you're having this same problem but you don't have availability of the same you know level of spares and stuff like that so looking through this quad the only thing the only sort of obvious thing that i can see um, and it's not really that bad but this little bit here where the flight control is mounted moves a tiny tiny little bit i'm going to stop recording in slow-mo because that's dumb
So the only thing I was able to find on this flight controller, it's mounted on these little rubber bobbin things that a lot of frames are starting to come with now. And the it's got these nylon screws on the top here, which are a little bit loose. It doesn't move a lot, but there's a tiny bit of subtle movement there when I grab onto the USB port and move it up and down. I don't think that's enough to cause the oscillation, but there is some movement there, and so that means we have to tighten that up and then go out and test it. So that's what we're gonna do first. So one thing I have noticed in going through tightening up the nylon uh, nuts on the top of these bobbin things, and then looking at the screws on the bottom is that the screws going into the bobbins from the bottom are actually, it's like they're a tiny bit too long, and you can, on this one in particular, uh, it's gonna be very hard for me to show that, but this one, you screw it all the way in, and because it's like, there's only a certain amount of thread in the bottom of this um, standoff, it's hitting the top of that thread, but it's still not screwed all the way in, so that moves a tiny little bit. So, I'm going to dig into my box of washers here, and uh, we're gonna try adding a couple of plastic washers in the bottom to space them out, which will mean that there'll be less thread going into the bottom of these bobbins, but they'll be more secure, they should be tighter. I will say this is one of the things about this build in particular that is different to the way that I put my quads together. Um, I've tried using these sorts of um, bobbin things, which if I get one out of here, you can have a look at what I mean. I think these are a different brand, but Basically, you got the metal that you put your nut onto on the top, so your flight control sits up there, and then there's like a brass thread in the bottom here, and they are separated by this, this, it's just a block of rubber. They're not attached to each other, so that's your soft mount. But I find that it's, for one thing, it's really hard to get the right length screws because it's kind of like a thread that ends, um, and getting the screw in the bottom to stay there not to be the right length and not come loose. To have a nut that sits on the top that screws all the way on and is tight enough without actually twisting the bit of rubber and snapping it, which happens a lot, um, I just find them to be too much of a pain in the ass to, to use. So what I do is I just use these um, female, female nylon standoffs, uh, screw in the bottom and then use these rubber uh, rubber washers, just like a rubber O-ring basically, sits on the top, fire control sits on top of that, screw in the top. So screws from both ends, um, this O-ring sits between the fire control and the, and, the, uh, and the standoff, and it works perfectly. It stays tight, doesn't come loose, don't get any vibrations through, um, through the quad seems to stand up to crashes and stuff really well so that's just the method that I stuck with but for the purposes of figuring this out we're going to stick with this mounting method and see if we can solve the problem and uh, yeah hopefully we'll learn some more things which is effectively the, the purpose of what we're doing here it's not so much just to fix the problem it's to learn exactly what the problem was what was causing it and uh, you know you can avoid that in future so that's looking a lot better. The fire controller is definitely more rigidly mounted now. Um, so I'm going to throw a GoPro on the top to make sure that the weight is the same, throw a battery on there, go out and test it outside. So we'll do that now. Okay, so we're back, we're out at the park. First test of the first slight modification to this drone. Uh, got my GoPro and a battery and everything on there. Uh, so yeah, that battery strap's pretty tight now. Nothing should be moving around. The fire control is nice and tight. Um, one of the things that sort of makes this process pretty tedious is that you need to come out and flight test this thing every time you make any sort of change. And I suspect that's one of the reasons why people... Oh, you've, you've been kidding me. Well, just to make my point, one of the things that, I, what I was saying is that one of the things that makes this process so tedious is that you need to come out to a park somewhere that you can test the drone. If you don't have that right next to your house, it's a bit of a process, you know, even though you're 
going to fly for not very long at all. You still got to pack up your stuff, get the drone, go out to the park, you know, that probably involves a short drive. Go to the spot. And I just forgot one antenna because this drone is on 2.4 and I don't normally fly 2.4, so I didn't bring my 2.4 antenna for my Tyrannus. So now I have to go back home again. And we're back, two seconds down the road, all to get myself this. Damn, 2.4. Yeah, so the point that I was gonna make before is I think that one of the reasons why people get so put off from sorting these problems out in this sort of fashion, test one thing at a time and, and really learn from what's going on is that it's a real pain in the ass, you know, doing it, doing things the way that I'm doing it right now. It's not fun. It takes a really long time. I doubt that I'll get this finished today unless this is the fix or maybe one more thing that I try and then that's done. But, you know, if, it, if I have to go through four or five different tests and a couple of those changes involve like pulling the quad apart, soldering stuff, putting new things back in, coming out, you know, I, I gotta get other work, stuff, work done, you know, like you might, you got a full-time job or whatever, you're gonna come in, come home, try and do this stuff in the evening. Um, you know, it's gonna take a long time. But the problem is that if you never go through this process of trying to learn from these things, when if you have an issue with your quad and you can't figure out what the cause of the problem is, you might fix it by just replacing a whole bunch of bits. But when that same problem comes up again in future, you're not gonna know what to do. So I think, you know, wherever possible, it's always a good idea to learn as much as you can from each problem solving experience because I kind of know now with my own quads, like it's very rare that I'll have an issue with a quad of mine that I can't figure out straight away. Um, just because I've been doing things the same way for so long. Um, you know, whenever I do come up with something that's not that obvious, I will take the time to do to, to test things in this in this sort of method. So anyway, let's, uh, let's see how this first test goes. Select the right model, make sure it's arming. Yep, real good. So I'm gonna try flying at line of sight. See if I can hear the oscillation. Uh, if it sounds smooth, then I'll go to FPV and see if it is doing anything that way. So just hovering, it seems fine. Actually seems pretty smooth, like, Throttle blipping it like that line of sight seems pretty much fine, to be honest. So I'll throw the GoPro on. All right, let's see how this goes. Yeah, it's still there. It's really bad. The thing is though, it sounds smooth now. I just gotta land, I think, on my... My goggles are a little bit out. Here we go. So, yeah, that sounds really smooth to me, so I don't know this possibility it could be a camera-related issue. We'll have to have a look at the HD video this time. All right, that's enough flying for this pack. We're gonna get kicked out of this golf course in a minute. Right, so we'll quickly check. Telemetry lost. That camera Telemetry does recovered. seem super solid. Lens is tight. There's nothing moving around there, so. Telemetry lost. Back to the workshop. I'm gonna quickly review the HD footage and see if there's as many shakes or some shakes or anything like that. There's jello, but is it oscillating as much? Either way, it isn't perfect. It's not as smooth as my quads and it should be. So, you know, the hardware's the same. There's no reason why it shouldn't work just as well, so. After looking at the HD footage, I think it's better than what it was previously, but definitely a long way from being fixed. Although when we were out there, I had a feeling it might just be the FPV camera. 
Still not really sure on that. So what I'm gonna do to speed this process up is take the top plate from this quad, which is pretty much built exactly the same as this one, um, in the sense that it's not running a TPU mount, it's got the foam pad on there. Uh, and I'm gonna pull the FPV camera out of this one because I know that the FPV camera in this quad is definitely fine. Um, and I can change those two both separately when we're out in the field. So that's two things I can try in one trip, which is gonna save us a little bit of time. Camera out like so. And we can have a quick look at it, see if there's anything loose. Does not look like it at all. No. It's pretty, pretty rigid. So I'm just having another sort of closer look at it and see if there's anything that looks like it could be causing us these issues. Well, actually, having looked at this, first thing is I'm pretty confident that the camera is not the cause, even if it's contributing to it being worse. So I am gonna sorta of skip one process because the top plate from this quad has a five volt uh, unify in it. And this is a HV, which is the wiring's different, the plug's different, so you can't just hot swap them around. Uh, so, but the one thing is that this VTX is flopping around a bit, like the way that that's mounted. So what we might do as our next step is just redo the way that this, uh, this top plate's sorted. Um, and that means I don't have to pull this thing apart. So I'll show you how I would do this. So let's, uh, this is one of my normal top plates. Um, you can see how that VTX is mounted there. So I have a feeling that that floppiness is at the very least not helping anything. Even if it's not the cause of the problem that we're currently having, um, it's still something that should be addressed, I think. So unifiers come with, they come with this blue pad thing on the bottom here that he's applied. Um, this pad is actually a adhesive thermal pad, which means that the pad itself is specifically designed to transfer heat from one surface to another. So you put it through, through two things um, and it will take the heat from whatever's generating the heat and pass it onto the surface that it's mounted to. Uh, the sort of thing that you would most commonly find these sorts of things in is in computers. So whether it's on a CPU, the, C the heat spreader on the top of the CPU, and then you would have a heat sink screwed to the top of that. And to make sure that, because those two surfaces are never perfectly flat, to make sure that there's good heat transfer from one to the other, you use either a paste, which fills in all of the gaps and is designed to transfer the heat, or you can use a pad. Um, now, unifiers are actually designed because they don't have a heat sink on them. They are designed to use the surface that they're mounted to as a heat sink. Now, I'm told by Trappy that ideally, because the, um, the unifier itself is just one big, like the, the board itself is all negative, like it it, um, you should be able to mount it straight onto carbon and it won't arc. I've never tried it um, because I may have misinterpreted what he said to me and you know maybe I'm gonna set a unifier on fire. I'm not entirely sure, but what you definitely can do is make sure that your unifier is mounted hard up against a piece of carbon. And contrary to what a lot of people seem to think, and um, my friend's mounting method of this using this foam pad um, actually makes the situation worse because it me it sort of isolates its heat generation in the unify to the unify itself and it doesn't have any way of dissipating that heat. Uh, so basically what you, what I've been doing, what I think you is you're best off doing is mounting your unify, keep the standard heat shrink on it get your carbon plate that you're gonna mount it to, even though this isn't like a solid piece of carbon for it to mount to, still mounting it hard up against a piece of carbon like that. 
sitting flat and then I just mount it with some electrical tape. I know this is not how other people do it. I know like Steel does it differently. He has it just loose. This is just how I've always done it and it's always worked really well for me. I can have my quad on 800 milliwatt on a hot day, sitting there in the sun, powered on, no problem, and it doesn't overheat. And it makes sure that the Unify itself, which is more applicable for our current situation, it doesn't move around at all. So we're not having to worry about this thing causing any sort of vibrations or anything like that. And the other thing that we can do, which is gonna help on this particular occasion, because it's a little bit loose, is we can reinforce this UFL connection by just taping it really hard down, putting quite a lot of tension on the tape, and that will sort of reinforce the whole thing. Make sure that it's definitely not going anywhere. The good thing about electrical tape, which is why also people use it for mounting their ESC, is that it's got quite a lot of give in it. Like it's it's a secure mounting method, but it doesn't mean that whatever you're mounting is like really rigidly mounted to its surface, like it would be with say zip tie, for example. And uh, there you go. So that's now obviously a lot more secure. That's not gonna move around. So that is one step towards things being more the way I do my quads. Whether that's gonna help this situation, we still don't know. All right, we're back. It's our new and improved top plate mounting arrangement. Right, what do we think? It's a lot better, but I don't think it's perfect. All right, let's fly this way. Because I think high throttle still has an issue. God, it's hard to fly with this 2.8 lens. Yeah, full throttle, it still has a, a wobble. It's a lot better than it was before. So we are making progress for sure, but I don't know what that high throttle wobble is. That could be something completely unrelated to what we just fixed. Though I have to say, I'm pretty surprised that that change to the VTX mounting made such a difference. I really didn't expect it. I was like, well, it's something I'm gonna to have to do because it's a loose thing I've noticed and you, you know, you gotta go through every step and it just goes to show that every little thing can make a difference. Now, later on today, there is gonna be a park once the schools are closed that I can use basically across the road from my house. Um, but the problem as well is that a really small park can get away with testing like low throttle oscillations. But if they're the sort of thing that only happen at high throttle, uh, you obviously need a lot more space to test that. Um, and this is like little square park sort of across the road from my house that sometimes I use for like real basic things. But for this sort of thing, it's not really suitable, unfortunately. All right. Now this is at the point where the whole process is going to become progressively more difficult because as you get rid of the problem, little bit by little bit, finding solutions for each little step is going to be harder and harder. There's not a lot though, it's definitely better than it was and at full throttle it's sort of Progress, all right. <clears throat> so we're back, we've reviewed the HD footage and significant improvements over what it was originally, but not quite perfect. Um, 
But I've had quads, the, the point that this is at now, I've had quads like this before and we're really starting to get close to it being perfect. Especially looking at the HD video. Um, it's hard for me to judge whether I've had, whether my quads have been at this point based on the FPV feed because this has got a 2.8 lens as opposed to a 1.8 mil lens. So my lens is much, much wider and if you have any slight oscillations, they are, become a lot more obvious in a narrow field of view lens because each tiny little movement is sort of amplified because it's narrow, it's like moving a bigger distance. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna check the, I'm gonna plug it into the computer and I'm gonna check the tune and I'm also gonna check the motors just for noise. So for general sort of vibrations, which you can use the uh, KISS GUI for. Um, so a basic way you do that, obviously take your props off, plug it in, put a battery on it, and you can spin each motor up one at a time. And I just sit it on a, sit a quad on the, sit the quad on a pillow so that it's just, you know, basically soften out the entire quad. And then you can look at the gyro trace from each motor and see if there's like, you know, one of them has more, um, has more, vibrations on the other and I do have a full set of uh, got a full set of spare motors here which I know these are all fresh that there's nothing bent or ish, there's no issues with those motors so if we need to we can swap one at a time and see if that makes any further improvements that's sitting about as flat as I can get it now so we'll do one more quick run through the motors motor one 1540, pretty good. Motor two. 1550, yep, pretty good. 1550, 1540, yep, pretty good. Pretty good, 1550, 1530. All right, so I'd be pretty confident to say based on that that the motors are fine. What we're gonna do now is I'm gonna mount the flight controller exactly the same as I do on this quad, which is with the nylon standoffs um, and the, the soft mount there. And we'll see if that makes any difference. More process of elimination. Right, then the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the orientation of the flight controller. Normally the flight controller sits like that, and you've got, where is it? The forward arrow there is pointing to the front of the quad, but I run mine this way with the flight controller front to back. Um, this is the front of the quad here. The downside is you end up with your USB port at the back here, although with the, uh, the fact that you can control your OSD uh, you can use your OSD to control the fire controller and redo your PIDs and everything if you need to. Um, and what it does do is it gets these connectors that are at the front, these ones that are normally, like on this quad, when it sits like that, they're hard up against that XT60 in which gets a lot of movement and it can affect uh, those plugs and break them. Whereas if you see on mine, that can move around as much as it wants and it's never gonna hit these connectors because they're at the front there, so. Who knows whether that makes any difference to how it actually flies. I wouldn't have thought so, but kind of clutching at straws at this point. So, so make sure that orientation works, which it does. And now all we have to do is apply some of these guys, these little rubber O-rings on top of the standoffs as we screw in to our uh, nylon standoffs. So you just screw that in just a little bit so that it's kind of still loose. The fire control is still loose, but you've started to thread that in. Okay, so again, make sure that's nice and loose still. Slowly screw these down, sort of. Make sure they're all nice and even, they're not too tight. These uh, O-rings will keep 
tension on the on the screws anyway, so they're not they're not going to come loose. At least not in my experience. So that's nice and solidly mounted now. Right, and now that we've made that change, all we need to do is go up to the advanced tab here, go into use custom FC orientation and put in 90 here. We've just turned it 90 degrees, hit save, and you're good to go. Everything else should be fine. All right, we're back with our reinstalled flight controller mounting system. Hoping for some more positive results. Um, but if, if it isn't perfect this time, we're probably going to have to resort to what will pretty much end up being a bit of a rebuild because there isn't a whole lot else wrong. We sort of check the motors. Uh, I do have a fresh set of props here just in case that's an issue. If I've bent them in transport or something, it's something that happens to me quite a lot. If I transport quads with props on and you know you sort of lean it up against something in the car and they get a little bit bent I think these ones are fine but you know you've got to eliminate all these simple things from the equation before you sit down and spend like two hours rebuilding and resoldering the entire quad the other thing is it's quite windy today which might seem like a bad thing but I think it's good to test quads in these sorts of conditions because they should still be fine like at least in terms of smoothness, a quad shouldn't be oscillating these days. The fly controllers are that good that if you're having an oscillation like we're still having, it's not a wind related thing. The wind usually just sort of blows you off course a little bit or something like that. Uh, now, I will say that I didn't hover test this thing since I changed the fly control orientation. I've done that a lot of times and so I guess I kind of just assumed that it'd be fine but that's a bit dumb because there's a good chance it will just go bananas and flip out on me if the orientation's wrong. But, uh, I guess we're about to find out, aren't we? Generally, if you've got it wrong, like the moment that you arm it and try and throttle up, it goes bad. Is that in the frame? It is in the frame. So if this kills me, you'll be able to see it or it'll hit the camera. Nope, so far so good. Okay. So, still oscillating. At least in the FPV feed it is. It sounds really smooth though, so. So we're going to chuck in a different FPV camera quickly. See if that helps. Is that gonna focus? Look. So this is the 2.8, or it might even be a 2.5, I'm not sure, but that's a 2. Point, uh, 1.8, which is like basically GoPro field of view. <laughs> Okay, well, it's not as bad, that's for sure. Something bad happened. I think the GoPro battery strap was chopped. Ah, I see what happened. But that's okay, because I was planning on changing these props anyway to this fresh packet. I just had that like get flicked in front of the lens. You can sort of see it's been chopped up by the prop a little bit. It's a bit too long, this strap, but yeah, whatever. Should be right. So again, the proof is gonna be in the HD video. See if getting the jello. It was more jello that I was noticing in the last few uh, bits of HD video from this thing. Not so much like an obvious oscillation. Which is not something I've seen for a long time, people having jello in video. Except for Chad's long range video on Ray Wright. That seems perfect, yeah? Yep, that's perfect. 
Which is bad, because now that means, hang on. We've got to do the mid-throttles. Got to check the mid-throttles. Yeah, it seems pretty good to me. Now that means I have to put that camera back in. It'd be funny if those last few oscillations were marked. just the result of some slightly sketchy props. But, hey, that's how it goes. Got to test all these things. So after all that, it looks like it might be fixed. But the oscillations were so much more obvious with, um, with this lens and this camera. I don't think there's anything loose in that camera. The only thing that it is missing is uh, these screws that go in the back that hold the bracket section, basically, that comes with the Alien onto the back of the camera itself are supposed to come with these little rubber O-rings that essentially put, like, keep... It's like soft mounting the camera, effectively. Um, and they're part of the kit. They're meant to be there for a, certain, for a specific reason. And... Uh, I don't think this one's got it. At least they're not where you would normally put them. So maybe that's causing it to wobble a little bit. It's possible. But I'm pretty confident after that flight just then. I mean, again, we'll have to check the HD video when we get back. Uh, but I'm pretty confident that the quad itself is not oscillating anymore. So if that turns out to be the case, looks like all it was was a simple case of going through and making sure that everything was tight everything you know nothing was super loose on the quad when it was sent to me but nothing was like solid tight either um, and that's something i'm always being real pedantic about on my quad so maybe that's the cause of you know me not having had this issue so much and other people having it so if you are having that problem tighten all your shit up and you'll probably be fine <laughs> It's still oscillating, but I'm definitely starting to think now that it's the camera because it sounds perfectly smooth. It's not a helpful way to have your GoPro strapped on, I don't think, having the strap just right around the front. Okay, it is now the future, the next day. Uh, I've spoken to uh, Jonathan, the owner of this quad, and confirmed that he didn't install the rubber O-rings like I suspected on the camera. So, based on that, I'm gonna call this job done. I'm gonna quickly throw these O-rings in for him because I've got a couple of spares here. So, they're literally, yeah. Those tiny little things, they sit, there's two screws like that that go through the little carbon plate in the back of the camera into the camera casing and through the PCB. And these little O-rings just keep them tight. Now, obviously, this is, this is a specific thing to aliens, but it's still relevant to mention um, for the video because I think the main lesson that we've learned from this is that, like I went into this thinking that based on how bad the oscillations were that there was just gonna be like one major thing wrong with it and it was just gonna be a case of going through and testing different things and then all of a sudden it would be fixed once I'd changed one thing, but it turns out it was it got slightly better each time I fixed something that was slightly loose. So I've always been a little bit bewildered by people that constantly complain about having these little oscillations and stuff that they can't get rid of. Um, and a lot of people do just resort to blaming things like the tune or a piece of hardware or firmware or something like that. Um, and then they come, like, you know, people might come to me and say, oh, you've got the same setup, you're running the same, everything works for you, but it doesn't work for me. And I'm like, you know, what can I tell you? I don't know, I don't know what to say. Like, I haven't done anything special, but I just don't seem to have the problem. Um, so I suppose this just proves the point that you just need to make sure that even if you think that a slight, like, oversight on the way that you've put the quad together is not going to make a difference chances are it probably will and so 
you know, just spending that little bit of extra time putting the thing together and always making sure that all the bolts are tight and everything's mounted securely. That's probably the difference between the people that have issues with their quads and the people that don't have issues with their quads. So, um, once I get this top plate off, we'll quickly run through the things, the exact list of things that I did to this and the changes that I made. So we got the top off now. The things that I changed in order, I using the original sort of rubberized standoff things that came with the quad, tried using them but reinforcing them through the bottom by making sure that the screws going through the bottom had a washer on them that made them the right length. That made a little bit of a difference. The next thing we did was to remount the, um, the VTX. So you can see it's obviously, there's a heap of electrical tape on it there. Um, super secure, nothing is moving around, even the battery straps um, are all nice and solid. Then the final thing that we did was to remount the flight controller completely using the female-female nylon standoffs and then the little O-rings to soft mount the flight controller. That was it, problem solved. It was perfectly smooth. It flew exactly like all of my quads once I did that, which I suppose it should because it's the exact same components and at that point pretty much built the same way. So yeah. That's uh, that's the end of the that's it in that video. I'm just gonna go ahead and sort this uh, sort the O-rings out on this camera and then um, send it back to Jonathan and uh, he'll be good to go. So thanks for watching and if you've got any other suggestions or questions on this sort of thing that I could maybe cover in future, by all means leave them in the comments and we will cover them in a future video. Thanks for watching.